Hello guys, Jerry teaches Chinese. I got my teacher here, teacher Sherry, Sherry Laoshi, or you would call her Ma Laoshi because her last name is Ma. Ma Laoshi. Ma Laoshi, Ma Laoshi. Yeah. So Ma actually, very interestingly, Ma tends to be a Hui. There's an ethnicity in China that, that they're Hui, but Sherry is not Hui. So I, when I first met her, I'm like, Sherry, are you Hui? She's like, nope, but a lot of people who have the Ma surname are Hui. It's very interesting. Okay. We'll do a video soon on like the different ethnicities in China. Today we wanted to do kind of a really cool cultural exchange because what Sherry told me and what I've been telling her is that a lot of English words made it into Chinese and a lot of Chinese words actually made it into English. So there's kind of like a cool little cultural exchange, right? I'm going to get deep here for one second. In anthropology, archaeology, whenever there's two cultures, there's inevitably, if they interact, there's inevitably going to be a fusion somehow. No culture, even if it's a dominant culture suppressing a culture that's not as dominant, they're still going to influence each other. So that's my anthropology rant for the day. Sherry, I will go first. I will talk about one word that's we are used to saying in English that came from Chinese. The word is bok choy. Bok choy is this leafy vegetable that is now in Whole Foods and Ralph's and a lot of American stores too. Bok choy came from the Chinese word for bai cai. Bai cai. Bai means white. Cai means vegetable, white vegetable. But it's, it's bok choy if you guys are familiar with bok choy. So now you guys know that's what, if you want to sound Chinese, how you say bok choy. It's bai cai. Yeah, but if you say bok choy to, you say the English to, American, do they know the book choy? What is it? I think it depends on the, the state. In California, they would know. Probably in places like, I don't know, Mississippi, they probably wouldn't know as much, I would say. But I think in any place that ha that's like a big city where they can import a lot of goods from China, then probably they've seen book choy in the mm -hmm. vegetable section. I think all of you are familiar with tofu, right? Tofu in Chinese is tofu. Tofu. So that's tofu, tofu, okay, yeah. tofu. And literally, tofu is bean, fu is like fermented, right? So like tofu means fermented bean. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about it, you know, fu, what's the meaning of fu exactly, yeah. Again, Chinese is a very self-defining language. Like, so it's like, you, even if you don't know exactly what tofu is, if, but by hearing it, if you see the word, you're like, okay, it's probably something related to bean. It's probably a type of bean, type of product, byproduct that's not the little seed type of thing. Really interesting. That's why I love Chinese. So the next one is dian xing. Dian xing. And if you guys ever go dim sum, that's the word. That's the word. Dim sum comes from dian xing. Yeah. So now you guys know. If you really wanted to sound... Authentic, say dian sing instead of dim sum. Yeah, I think in Cantonese they say dim, dim song, dim song. Dim yeah. song, dim song. Dim Makes sense. So it, it came from Cantonese. What about another word, Sherry, that Chinese people use that had an English or Western origin? Uh, you know, if I say ba lei, can you guess what is it? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, ballet. Right. It's probably ballet. Yeah. So ba lei, I see. Ba lei. I had friends that did ballet mm -hmm. so so like in in french i think ballet is a french origin i'm sure ballet just means dance but mm -hmm. because in chinese you know they took that word's pronunciation they have to add the word dance ballet wu. so literally it's like dance dance kind of like pin number pin means personal identification number but since not everyone knows what pin stands for people have to say pin number so in chinese ballet wu. even though ballet literally means a dance if it were still French. French and Italian. Okay, yeah, so it's a, it's a romance language root. And it has a Greek root too. Okay. And cool. if I say guitar, guitar, guitar. That's right. No, that guitar. Yeah. So the ta is, is in a neutral tone. So usually it would be pronounced ta, but in this case it would be guitar. I think you, you can say both. You can say both. It's not that strict for that word. Yeah. Exactly. Because after all, it's a lone word. On my end, a lot of you, especially you health conscious people, know ginseng, right? Ginseng. Or, what is ginseng? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Ginseng. So ginseng 
I, I assume again, Sherry, it's like the Cantonese. It became ginseng. Yeah, yeah. Ginseng. probably it's Cantonese. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm you know ginseng is how they pronounce ginseng in Cantonese. Yeah. 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 Um, zhen, of course, means person or people. Shen's, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what shen, shen's just like. I think it's a plant. Like a root. Yeah, like a plant, like a, a root. Root, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like a, a root or a plant that a person can eat, basically. That's what zhen shen stands for. Yeah, the word I can think of is ke, ko, ke, le. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Coca Cola. And I think funny story, Sherry, about Coca Cola. If you translate Coca Cola directly, it doesn't work because that's Coca Cola. So, like, my mouth is stuffed and my mouth is too spicy. So, you had to like change it a little. So, instead of Coca Cola, Coca Cola, you had to say Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a very, very successful translation for yeah. the brand. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's tea, right? Yep. If you guys go by fruit, you guys have probably seen something called a loquat. What is a loquat? Lu ju. I don't even know that in, in Mandarin or in Chinese. <laughs> it's a type of orange. It's kind of it's kind of like a type of orange. Oh, I see what I uh I may say lu gan, lu ju, it's the same. Oh yeah, lu gan. So you say lu gan. A uh, lu gar, I usually Lugar. put an earth because I'm from North. I <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah, so um loquat is another word we say in English that had a root in oh. Chinese, either Mandarin or Cantonese. This is my first time to know, you know, how how do you say lu gan in English? Lu yeah. quat. Lu quat. And in fact, there's another word, kamquat. I think it probably has a similar... Um, kamquat? Um, yeah. What is that? I don't even know. Jingju, uh, kamquat. Oh. So it's like, you know how... Um, it's not golden Jinju. orange. Yeah. <laughs> golden yeah. mandarin. Huh. Is yeah, quat. exactly. Kamquat. And then we have, um, a lot of people know Wang Tong, Hun Dun. Hun Dun. Hun Dun. So that. again, I think it's Cantonese and Cantonese, they probably say something like Wang Tong or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Hun Dun. Bikini. 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 So were there no bikinis in China? Is that why? Like, was the first bikini they ever saw worn by a Western person or something? I don't know. Probably, uh, I haven't checked it. What's the origin of that word? But I think it's the word from Western, or from English, or from, uh, yeah, from English. Uh, Just fit it into bikini. Okay, I see. I think in English word. Bikini. Bikini. I don't even, I didn't even know it. Bikini. I'm going to remember. Bikini. Yeah. The next loan word that I think some of you probably have heard, you probably don't know that this was this was the case. In fact, Sherry and I were talking about that. Most people, if you say this word, you might not even be able to picture what this is. But I'm gonna give it to you anyways. It's lychee or lychee, mm -hmm. and the Chinese word for it is li zhi. Li zhi. Yeah, li zhi is a Chinese. It's a really cool kind of like. Um, fruit that's red on the outside and you peel it and there's like a very like meaty type of like white fruit on the inside so if you guys haven't seen a lychee or lychee 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 yeah what else um oh shafa if i say shafa yeah you know, most people would probably say sounds like sofa yeah it is it's a sofa yeah, yeah. It is. shafa 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 Shafa. Wow. Okay, so I guess what that means is back in the day, Chinese people didn't have couches or something, right? Like, <laughs> in, in China, they didn't have couches? Is that what it, like, or is it they just didn't have that type of couch, like a specific type of couch that they associated with Shafa? I'm just curious how, how we're like, like there was no native word for something that we in the West take so much for granted, you know, a sofa. Yeah, I think this is a native English word, but it's not a Chinese word. We just translate sofa to shafa. So interesting. I guess what that means is I need to do a history of the sofa. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I'm so confused that like they never had a couch or something before the West or, you know, maybe some other, some other place like introduced it to China. That's, wow. The word coolie. 
sometimes it's used a little derogatory. It's, it's, it, I think it's kind of a little derogatory, this, this word, but everyone has heard the word. Basically, it's someone that works. It's like kind of almost an indentured servant or someone that works very hard and works a very kind of bottom job, so to speak. So maybe you could say a laborer, but it has a more negative connotation. So surprisingly, coolie came from a direct Chinese word, coolie, coolie, which literally means bitter work or bitter strength. That's, that's a literal translation of coolie. But basically, it's like if you need someone to work and, let's say, carry your furniture when you are moving or something like that, right? That would be a coolie or someone in the mines or something like that. That's like coolie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there is a few telling how uh, the first people came from uh, California to dig for gold, and and that film is called Kuli, I think. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm gonna check it on later. Wow, and it makes sense because I think when you hear the word Kuli, you associate it with Irish, right? A lot of times, I think in the old days of America, when they would want to make fun of Irish people, they would call them coolies. And I think the reason is because there were two, two or maybe three, probably just two main peoples that America kind of exploited to build its railroads, the Irish and the Chinese. So it makes sense that there would be like a mixing of languages and suddenly the word coolie would get associated with Irish people because Irish people and Chinese people worked on the railroads. Coffee. Oh yeah, cafe. I, I I drink it almost every day. I didn't even think about cafe. Um, chocolate. 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 Oh, uh, did we talk about kala okay? Not yet. Yeah, kala okay. Yeah. Kala okay. So for those of you who are hearing kala okay, what does that remind you of? Mm -hmm. <laughs> karaoke, right? Karaoke. Kala, okay, karaoke. Here's a very funny one that potentially there's, it's a little bit of a stretch, but we're going to present it anyways. Um, the word for, there's a common English slang that's chop, 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 chop. chop. What that means is hurry up, hurry up, right? I've heard it since I was young. And for many years, I didn't understand what it meant because chop, right? Chop is cotton. I'm like, whoa, wait, wait. Chop, 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 chop. So what I found out through research is that in Cantonese, the word for like, it's really in a rush right now. Time is of the essence. The word in Mandarin is zi, zi. In Cantonese, apparently, it's kind of like gap, gap, or gap, or something like that. So I guess... Somehow through that, it became chop. So chop, chop came from Cantonese. The, the word in Mandarin is zi. I guess maybe it's a Cantonese expression. Like in Mandarin, you would never say zi, zi. You wouldn't go zi, zi, right? But I assume if, it, if it, it went into English as a loan word, in Cantonese, they must be going gap, gap or something like that. I have to ask my uh, Cantonese friend to hear how they say Chop chop. Yeah. I never, but I've never heard, you know, Americans say chop chop here. Is this very regular? It's or very common. I think if you went to high school, high school is when I started hearing it. If you went to high school in America, you would hear chop chop. Okay. Chop okay. chop. Yeah. Chop chop. So now we know. See, the Chinese culture has influenced America way before the 2000s. I will give one more word, which is really interesting. And this is another word I'm a little suspicious of, but. I'm going to present it anyways. The word is Shih Tzu. You know the dog, the Shih Tzu? Shih Tzu. Yeah, there's a dog called the Shih Tzu. So um, according to some sources, the translation for Shih Tzu is Si Shi. Oh. Si Shi. Shih Tzu. Si Shi. We translate Si Shi to Shi. What is that? Yeah, Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a little suspicious of that because the source says that there's a Tibetan dog called the Xishu Chue, apparently. 
Oh. 对，西施去。Oh, uh, 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 so when you when you say Shishu, are you mean the very famous beauty in the? Yeah,、album? exactly. Like, um, I, it's the same characters as her name, like Shishu, right? And I'm like, eh, there's something called Shizuko, right?、Oh, and I'm thinking Shitsu, maybe more like Shizu, not really Shishu, but more like Shizuko. You know that, right? Shizu, Shitsu. I don't. Yeah, I think they they are just to translate from the shizu go. No, no, I don't think it has really to the you know shizu, the figure in Chinese history. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're both in agreement that yes, shizu is absolutely a loan word from Chinese, but it's shizu. It's not the shi shi.、Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a stretch. So I have to ask you, what you mean? You say long word. Do you say long word or what? Oh, loan, loan, loan word. Yeah, loan word. So loan word, loan word. It's a good vocabulary term to keep in mind. I didn't even know exactly what to use. I just earlier I said loan word and I checked to make sure I was using it right. But it's called a loan word. Oh, 外来语外来语 exactly. No, 外来语外来语 loan word. Loan word. So what's interesting is people claim that brainwashing, brainwash, sinal.、Oh. People claim that actually came from that came from Chinese. Yeah, sinal. Sinal. I, I again, I'm not sure of this, but according to Wikipedia, oh, is that is from Chinese? It's from the Korean War, you know, because、oh. China and America fought, right? And so. The word "sinal" became became a term that people in in the American military started hearing. That's interesting. Yeah, brainwashing. You know, um, "cheza," "cheza." Apparently, in Cantonese, it's pronounced kind of like ketchup, like ketchup. Ketchup. Yeah. So apparently, I, again, debatable, but apparently, "cheza," ketchup, it it like. Translated into ketchup, but I I but don't know if ketchup came from China though.、Mm, no, I have no idea. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, because you know there's something called catsup, right? Catsup, ketchup. Apparently, yeah.、Uh, apparently, it did.、Uh, the original kind of like idea of ketchup came from southern China, or even even Southeast Asia. Okay. Yeah, learning something new today. Here's a pretty easy word for everyone. You've all heard this feng shui, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, feng shui. How do you say that in English? Just the feng shui. Yeah, just feng shui. Yeah, that, that's exactly the so same. So it's an exact loan word. I don't think it's. I don't think it's, it's a loan word. It just you know just borrow that word. Yeah. What would this be called then if it's like? Let me let me see if there's another word to describe like an exact. It's not even like yeah. I, I guess it's still a loan word, but yeah, feng shui. Literally, feng means wind, shui means water.、Mm -hmm. Feng shui. I believe in 2012 is when I first heard Americans use this term, guan xi. Oh. Americans are using this term, direct loan word from Chinese, guan xi. It reminds me of another word, which is mian zi, right? Yeah. Mian. Face. Yeah. Face. Yeah. Yeah. Americans are starting to use that word too. Means. Yeah. 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 Because for a while people were just saying face, but people weren't understanding the meaning of it. So I think eventually people were just saying, "Let's just say means." People understand it. Yeah. Save your save your face. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Apparently, long time no see. Long time. Oh, I'm I'm quite curious. Do you do you guys really use that word? Long time no see. Yeah, we we do. We absolutely do. Because we Chinese make fun of it. Yeah, because it's translated directly from Chinese. Yeah. 好久不见。好久不见。So apparently, I wouldn't call this a loan word because it's not like we're saying 好久不见 We're not saying that. But the the definition is a direct kind of borrowing from Chinese expressions. So that's pretty cool. How do you put it? Now we know. Yeah, we say long time no see all the time. Long time no see, man. And then, um, mahjong. 
Oh, 麻将 Yeah, 麻将 Hmm. So, of course, for those of you studying Chinese, you would know pinyin, right?、Uh, that's a direct loan word, but you know that's not really used unless you study Chinese.、Um, ramen. Ramen. Ah,、oh, yeah, like la mian. La mian. La mian. Yeah. So, yeah. that's pretty cool. Like, here's a word that's interesting. It's a word that came from Japanese that. Originally came from Chinese, so rickshaw. If you're familiar, rickshaw. What we would call a um um like a sanlunshu or a zhenlichu. Oh, that's a rickshaw. Yeah, it's called a rickshaw, and the reason is because in Japanese, riki li is the, the li is is the Japanese word in in Japanese. It's riki, and then、um, sha chu in Japanese、oh. is sha. You know, it's interesting that I've never seen any lychee in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and of course, we've never seen any rickshaws either. I feel like in Little Tokyo, they should have some rickshaws. But when you see rickshaw to American, will they know what it, what is that? Um, probably only twenty percent would know what it is. Like people who've traveled the world or know history would know what a rickshaw is, but like. The majority of people who haven't traveled the world or haven't like read about history probably don't know what what rickshaw is. The word for tea is a fujian. It's a it's a hokin fujian、um, translation. So it's a it's a minan. Oh. It's a minan、um, translation. Kejiahua. Yeah, potentially for 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 tea. So the word tea came directly from from Chinese too. Very interesting. I heard also the word "si," the word "silk." It it、oh. came from Chinese. It directly came from Chinese too. Yeah. And apparently, originally, "silk" was pronounced more like "siu," so not like "si," but like "siu." So that really sounds like silk. Probably "siu" is Cantonese. Cantonese, it's、so、like "siu." Yeah. So that sounds like silk. I'll give one more. This is another one where it has more of a Japanese origin, but we all know a lot of the Japanese culture was inspired by the Tang Dynasty China, so it probably traces itself to Japan and back to China. The word tycoon, tycoon's like someone that is a really good businessman. Use for example, Bill Gates is a internet tycoon, right? Steve Jobs is a smartphone tycoon, so like a big, a good businessman. Hello, it's tycoon. Yeah. Um. So. It says it's like da jun, da jun, but da lao.、Uh, that, that's it. I've definitely heard that term before. Da lao. Da jun. I don't think we use the word da jun. Yeah, that's a Japanese Japanese term. Can you can you can you say that word again? What is ty? What, what is yeah, tycoon. Tycoon. Yeah, tycoon. T y c o o n. Tycoon. Yeah, da lao, da lao. Dalo is more like gangster, right? Or like the head gangster, maybe? Is that the right word to just? We say 商业大佬 like 商业大佬 So yeah, that would be like a tycoon. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah, tycoon originated from Japanese tycoon. Yeah, 大亨大亨商业大亨大亨对 Yeah. Ah,、oh, I've never heard that word. 大亨大亨 Oh, tycoon. There it is. 大亨大亨大亨哇 I learned a new word today, Da Hong,、mm-hmm. tycoon. So in a way, I get a feeling Da Hong is almost a direct loan word from English, right? It, da Hong kind of sounds like tycoon, Da Hong. So it's like originally the word Da Jun came from China, and then the word Da Jun was used in Japan, and then became tycoon in English, and then it went back to China as Da Hong. Mm-hmm. That is the beauty of languages: how they loan and borrow from each other. Well, that is all I got with loan words today. But we learned a lot of great loan words. Learned a lot of great cultural and linguistic history. Sherry, if people want to take lessons from you, how can they get in touch with you? Are you going to have a YouTube channel? Are you going to just come on this channel more? What's your plan? <laughs> Yeah, currently,、uh, I don't have my own channel. Yeah,、mm-hmm. but I, I don't know. No, maybe、Probably. Sherry's gonna come back. So, guys, if you guys have English lesson requests, if you're confused about something, you got questions, 
please let us know. Maybe we'll bring Sherry back to do a lesson based on what you guys want to see, what you guys want to hear. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing online teaching, but I'm not so sure yet because I'm still looking for a job right now. Yeah. Mm, okay, so um, when Sherry has time, she will do more lessons for us yeah. on Jerry Teaches Chinese. Thank you guys so much, man. Press subscribe. We will be back.